That's right, follow my finger. This is the current state-of-the-art diagnostic for brain injury. <laughs> it's a gigantic problem. Every eight seconds, somebody in the U.S. gets a serious blow to the head from a fall, collision, or accident, and we can't even tell how badly they're hurt. Sometimes, we can't even tell if they're hurt at all, not even with our best technology. We use CT and MRI scans, but concussion does not generally show up on these. The brain appears normal, even though it doesn't function normally. Even when we know someone has a brain injury, it can be very difficult to tell if they're getting better or getting worse over time. As someone who's run clinical trials for brain injury, I've been wrestling with this problem for years. We need outcome measures. A few years ago, we were trying to figure out how we could quantify if severely injured vegetative patients were getting better or not. A collaborator said to me, why don't you try tracking their eye movements? We had this idea that less injured people would be able to watch television, while more severely injured patients would just stare into space. So we wrote computer software that tracks a viewer's pupils as they follow action on a screen. Looks familiar. We set up an eye-tracking camera and started recording people's eye movements while they watched a music video by Shakira, because her hips don't lie. <laughs> we tracked normal healthy controls and compared them to my neurosurgery patients. The software measured how well their eyes followed action on the screen and whether their pupils were able to converge on a focal point as that point moved. If one eye lagged behind the other, even for just a fraction of a second, we would be able to detect that. I remember what happened next as if it were yesterday. It was late in the afternoon on Friday, February 10th, 2012. I'd had a busy week, I was kind of tired. I went into my office, had my feet up on my desk. My postdoc walked in, and she handed me a stack of data. Have a great weekend, she said. I was on call, my family was away, I had no plans for the evening. I settled down to start to look through the results. As I looked through the pages, all of a sudden, it hit me. It was in the data. It was clear that normal, healthy people were moving their eyes in a way very, very different than people who had swelling in their brains. In fact, in many patients, eye movement abnormalities actually revealed where in the brain the injury might have occurred. Their eyes told the story. Sitting there in my office, I couldn't believe this. I was in absolute shock. If this meant what I thought it did, then we might finally have a way to reliably detect and quantitate the severity of brain injury. Even though it made anatomical sense, I thought, this can't be right. Maybe our methodology is off. Maybe this is an artifact. So I said, OK, let's get a second opinion. I made an appointment with my department chair, took my data to his office, and I showed it to him. And I could tell by the look on his face that he not only understood the data, but he instantly realized its implications, just as I had. Even then, I thought, OK, I can't trust this. Let's send it to someone objective. I sent it to two different statisticians, and I gave them the piles of data, and I said, tell me what you think. They both came back to me and said, yes, there's a clear statistical difference between these groups. My confidence was further bolstered when we set up eye movement tracking at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Concussion Center. And we saw, sadly enough, that concussion in children results in just as severe of eye movement abnormalities as it does in adults. For doctors who treat brain injury, this might be a quantum leap. We don't have to guess anymore. Concussion does not have to be invisible. We can detect it, we can measure it, we can quantitate it as it gets better or worse. We might even be able to locate it. We can do this in a two-year-old, we can do this in a 92-year-old. They can speak any language or have any level of literacy. With eye movement tracking, it's virtually impossible for someone to fake wellness, disease, or premature recovery. 
We've started a company to commercialize this technology and make it mainstream, affordable, and accessible to absolutely everyone. Millions of times a year, when people are wheeled into an emergency room, we want to be able to give them a fast, accurate diagnosis. Do they have a brain injury? How bad is it? Where is it? When something is invisible, you can't run clinical trials. You can't test whether something prevents it. You can't test whether something treats it. But when it's not invisible, imagine what you can do. You can improve quality of life, and you can save lives. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul, but perhaps how the eyes move are a window to the brain. Thank you. <laughs>